All right guys, what's going on? Coach Joe here at the Lion's Den. In this video, we're gonna be covering five deadlift variations specifically for strength sport athletes that I feel like you all should be doing, okay? We're gonna go over each one of them, uh, why we would do them and when to incorporate them in your program, and also kind of just some fatigue management points with, with each of them, because they're all a little bit different and unique, uh, but they are gonna be closer to the deadlift in terms of specificity. So if you're trying to do hypertrophy training, uh, we'll probably include one that I'd recommend for more hypertrophy, uh, but at the same time, this is for people people who want to increase their deadlift, get stronger in the deadlift, and improve that lift specifically, okay? So uh, Coach Matt and I are gonna bounce back and forth. If you guys didn't know, Coach Matt is my videographer. He's also a coach here at the Den. He is the fitness editor. He does a lot of things, all right? He does a lot of things. He sometimes uh, takes me for walks in my stroller. Uh, I call him daddy, I'm not sure. But anyway, um, he's gonna kind of give his insight on the deadlift. He's improved his deadlift a ton. He's also training for an Ironman, which is, I, I don't, Matt, why are you doing this? I don't even know what I'm doing anymore, Joe. I don't think he knows who he is. He's been hanging around with me too much, where I just have an identity crisis in strength sports. So he's doing it all. Uh, so head over to his channel if you want to figure out how to incorporate endurance and strength training together. He's holding his strength very well, maybe even improved his strength while training for an Ironman. Most people say it can't be done, but he's doing it, okay? So let's get over to the first variation. All right, so before I even get into the first variation, I should talk about deadlifting in general, all right? Most of you guys may be deadlifting one time per week, and if that works for you, awesome, okay? If it's not broken, you don't need to fix it. However, if you're kind of plateauing, I actually made a really good Instagram post on this the other day, which nobody really liked because they don't want informational content. I don't understand you guys. I really don't. They just want you to stay in plateau. Yeah. They don't want me to stir the pot, and those are the posts that do really well. I should start dumpster fires in my comment sections, which I have been, and it's been working really well. But... Head over to my Instagram. Uh, maybe we'll put a screenshot of that post right here for you guys to read more in depth on that. I'm actually probably gonna make a video on it, honestly. That's kind of the point of it. But um, if you guys are hitting all the things for recovery and training and you're plateauing, you probably need to up the dose, all right? Up the dose, which means increase the volume of the deadlift or the frequency. So maybe throw in two days a week, three days a week. I don't know. You may be crazy to do four days a week. So. You've been following the channel for a long time. You know Matt and I are a big proponent of increasing volume and increasing frequency. So that's our point right there. A little bit long. Matt's going to edit it so it sounds real pretty and cut up and chopped up. So first deadlift variation is going to be the pause deadlift. All right. Now, where you pause, that's up to you. But I kind of like pausing somewhere below the knee when I'm doing the deadlift. Okay. Um, reason being is one, it's really going to dial in that technique and making sure that you're engaging the muscles properly, okay? That pause is gonna force you to pause under load, and it's gonna also, when you watch on video, show you where the weak points in the chain are, okay? When you pause, are you kind of letting your shoulders, uh, you know, protract, and you're letting your lats loose, uh, and it's just gonna help you really dial in that technical aspect of the deadlift um, by throwing in that static pause right there. So I like pausing for one to two seconds. I don't really think anything more than that is super necessary. Uh, but it's a deadlift variation that I'll throw in kind of as my second day on my deadlift and just really trying to figuring out where the weak link is the chain and dialing it in there. So throw those in, like I said, somewhere below the knee. I kind of like uh, mid shin. So I'll probably pause like somewhere in the middle of my shin uh, or maybe, uh, you know, just an inch or two off. I'll kind of pause it just right there, hold it one to two seconds and I'll do that on my second variation day. Right, so Joe's got me on block pulls, which, uh, it's like the one movement I never rotate out of my programming and I probably should, but I do love block pulls. Uh, it's just a shorter range of motion movement, which normally we're not so about. We like those full ROMs, but the reason I like the block pull so much is because of that shorter range of motion, I can get myself acclimated to heavier weights, uh, which in strongman happens all the time. You're usually pulling from uh, an elevated surface, so you might be doing an 18 inch deadlift, you're pulling on a deadlift bar, silver dollar deadlift, all these elevated pulls, so being able to pull from that increased ROM or decreased ROM is super important for our sport. And it does change up your technique a little bit. So all the setup for it is the same, but the distinct feel of it is different. So you'll see a lot of pullers that actually prefer pulling off the floor. They prefer that feeling as opposed to the, the elevated feeling of a block pull. Uh, now you are gonna be able to lift more weight with this movement, so that's good to know from a load management aspect where you could be beating yourself into the ground if you're continuously adding more and more load to your training, so that's just good to keep in mind. Uh, the other thing we'll use this for is low back pain situations where the person cannot lower themselves down to a floor pull. Uh, we'll elevate that until they don't feel an instance of pain, uh, so it's another great use there. All right, the next variation, banded 
deadlifts. Why would we do banded deadlifts? Because we watch a lot of West Side Barbell videos, duh, or Elite FTS for that matter. You want to be the best, you have to use accommodating resistance. Just kidding, but kind of. So, banded deadlifts are accommodating resistance. Obviously, there's band tension, so as you're going up in the lift, it's going to get harder, okay? Which one I like because it just keeps you engaging in the lift, all right? Sometimes when people are, are traveling with the deadlift, they kind of get a little bit lazy, right? Their technique starts to slide a little bit, and they probably could have locked it out, but they just gave up. So when we have band tension, it's a good feedback mechanism that is gonna force us to keep tension throughout the entire lift, all right? So for deadlift specific, it's really gonna help, uh, as a second point, for the lockout, right? As the, the bands are getting harder and harder at the top, Okay, we're really forcing the engagement of the lockout on that lift. So that's kind of one of the main reasons that I like it, is if you're somebody who, one, just needs to focus more on your technique and engaging in the lift, and then two, uh, for a lockout strength, okay? So as we're getting up there, you know, we ha really have to utilize the, the muscles uh, and engage uh, the hips for the lockout of the deadlift. Uh, on top of that, it's just a great variation uh, that you can do uh, when you're trying to work with different volumes, different fatigues, different intensities, okay? So technically, you know, you're starting the bar maybe at 315, but at the top, it's gonna be around 500 pounds. So just a different training variable you can throw in there uh, and something that, you know, I've been incorporating a little bit more uh, that I do like. You know, I don't think it's the end all be all. And I think some people overuse bands and and accommodate resistance for that matter, but it is a cool tool to have in your toolbox. Joey and I were just joking off camera that I've never actually done a banded deadlift. My accommodating resistance has always been chains. So when we go to talk about bands, keep in mind that chains are a very similar accommodating resistance style that you can use as well. So we'll throw those in as extra. Uh, but what I'm talking about for this one is deficit deadlift. So that is increasing your range of motion. So you're standing on a plate. For me personally, I actually like a smaller deficit. So I only like an inch or two. You'll sometimes see people stacking up like 45 pound bumper plates and getting super high. I don't see a need for that. I like that kind of smaller deficit. Uh, just increase the range of motion a little bit. But with this, with that increased range of motion, you are making your deadlift a little bit harder, obviously, because you do have to move that weight further in space and time. Um, but this is also good from a load management aspect where that block pull is going to be increasing the load on the bar. This one most likely, unless you're a freak, is going to be decreasing the load on the bar. So you can make your training harder, load manage your training, uh, and still get a really good variation in. All right, so one of our last variations that I'm going to talk about is going to be the snatch grip deadlift. So when it comes to you know your time frame for whenever you're going to execute your deadlift, we want to keep the snatch grip deadlift probably a little bit further away because it's less specific uh, than the ones we've talked about in the past. But it is something that I really like including you know with my programming. So snatch grip deadlift is one going to just put you in a bad position. Uh, so if you're training in a bad position. Uh, honestly, whenever you get closer to being in that good position or what's specific to the deadlift, it's going to be a lot easier and feel a lot better. Uh, and it is still close enough to the deadlift, so you're training the same muscles. Uh, the reason that I like doing the snatch grip deadlift and more for a higher volume uh, instance and a little bit further out is because it's going to help build that upper back strength. So the further away we are from midline, right, whenever we're doing a lift, it's going to be harder. Uh, so with your hands wider, and, and this doesn't have to be like crazy wide, uh, like if you were doing a snatch, but just got to be wide enough that it's uncomfortable and different from your normal uh, grip for your deadlift. Okay, so there's sometimes there's gnarly marks on the bar, which just make it super easy to set up there. Uh, but I'm really going to feel this in my lats and my upper back and it's really going to help uh, also just doing the deadlift from the floor okay because this is going to be a longer range of motion so in that sense you kind of are getting a little bit of a deficit there because you're pulling from that weird position so I like throwing these on for my variation day uh, when I'm further out so maybe I have a competition and anywhere from like you know eight weeks out or a little bit longer I'll throw these in for more just building the muscles and the deadlift hitting that upper back and this lats a little bit more uh, and pulling from just an awkward position so when I do get my hands in closer, I'm going to feel a lot stronger, I'm going to be a lot more comfortable. Uh, so throw this snatch grip down with you. All right, guys, uh, this is Coach Zach of the Lions Den. I just want to make note that he is one of the only person that does sumo here at the gym. Uh, getting him on this video, it took me a lot of courage to build up to even ask him. Uh, but he is also a national ranked power lifter for uh, sumo deadlifting, he's, he's actually really good at it, so I figured I'd ask him, you know, kind of what are his favorite variations when it comes to deadlifting, because uh, I think it can go both ways, just leaving out the sumo part. <laughs>
Thanks. Yeah, so, well, kind of backtracking. I'm the only sumo deadlifter in a strongman gym that pulls hook grip, so, you know, I'm gonna take pride in that. But uh, my favorite variations are banded deadlifts. Um, I just I just love adding that accommodating resistance because my lockout is just terrible. So um, anything that's gonna improve my lockout, um, I love doing. Most people hate it because it's hard. Me, on the other hand, I am just one of those weirdos who love it. And, uh, other ones are just more technique stuff, so more tempo, just kind of slowing, slowing the bar path down, making sure that everything is moving in the right pattern. Um, Boris pulls I love. Um, again, slowing it down, working my lockout. Boris pull? Boris pulls, uh, I actually saw Joe Sullivan do it. Um, you might have seen it do it too, but you kind of do two half reps, nice and slow, getting the tension out, um, making sure everything is moving proper. You're not just ripping it and hoping for the best. Um, but you do two kind of half pulls, nice and slow, with almost like a second pause, right below the knees, and then your third lift, or your third, I guess, pull would just be a, a normal deadlift pull. Um, so those are my two kind of favorite techniques, Boris and Tempo. I love banded, and gotta love the heavy max effort singles. You know, the yeah, yeah. power lifter I am, so. <laughs> Zach's always in here pulling singles. Like, <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen you do more than a, a, a set of two. No, I'm kidding, he's done more than two. Yeah. But at the same time, he, he loves doing those max effort days. And then uh, just tell him a little bit uh, about like kind of your like, competition history, like where you are right now competing. Yeah, yeah, so I just came back from Nationals. Uh, I just came back from USBA drug testing Nationals a couple months ago, or a month and a half ago. Um, I did I did pretty well, I got fourth. Um, last year and the year before, I ended up uh, taking first, which was awesome, but uh, right now I'm training for IPL drug tested North Americans down in uh, Alabama in a month and a half. I actually don't even know what date I'm competing, but I know it's soon. So that's kind of like the main focus right now. I'm, I'm trying to train for that. Hopefully I can podium, get top three. That would be awesome, but that's gonna be my last competition of the year, so. My weird jumping <laughs> talking about this now, but guys, make sure you follow uh, Zach on Instagram. We'll link it right here. So those are just a couple of his deadlift variations. He's a deadlift specialist. He can meet at a high level, uh, drug tested. So, you know, he's clean as can be. And uh, now we're just gonna wrap up the video. Cool. All right, guys, there you have it. Five daily variations from myself, Coach Matt, uh, going on the strength sports specific realm for deadlifting. So throw them in with your training. We talked a little bit about why you're gonna use these deadlifts, fatigue management points, all sorts of goodies. We had Coach Zach on here, who's a high level deadlifter, give his take on it. Uh, so make sure you're following him, um, Matthew, and myself. I called him Matthew. I don't think I've ever called him Matthew on camera, but it sounded cool. Fancy, fancy super fancy. Uh, so. Guys, we also do have deadlift specific programming on zastrank.net. Make sure you go over to zastrank.net, check out the programs, purchase it if you like it. All the stuff that we talked about is included in those programs and all the principles as well. So it kind of takes the thinking out of the equation. Uh, if you guys also want, we have our Facebook group, The Iron Lions on Facebook. It's a great community, like-minded individuals who love uh, strength sports, strength training. We do form checks, we have uh, video analysis, we have all sorts of good things. And if you're not in there, you're just an idiot. So stop being an idiot. Join the Facebook group, The Iron Lions on Facebook. Uh, until then guys, stay in Lean Me Drag Machine. Catch you guys next time. Peace.